Hello, this is Mr. Tripi, and I'm going to show you how to create a cool retro style dither shader like these. It might be easier if I show a lower resolution to show the pixels a bit more. So this tutorial is based off of the cell shader that um, is in Strangely Named's tutorial. I'll put a link to that in the description. So it starts exactly the same as his by creating your own directional light. Just need an actor. And you could call it something like uh, Blueprint Sun. And you just need like an arrow component to let you know what direction it's going in. Um... Next, what you can do is make a macro or function that will um, that will get the forward vector. And store it in uh, and store into a vector parameter for a material collection that you need to make. So material collection dealer shader. And then just add a vector parameter called like like vector. And you can set some default value. So uh, pr take your material collection and get the light vector and store into there and then just call your macro something like set light vector and then call it in begin play and in your construction script so that you can see it when you're editing a level And you can just drag your blueprint sun into here. Next, you're gonna need to make a new material that will be for your dither. First thing you're gonna to want to do is have it be unlit. And then you're gonna to want to have your base texture, which I just found somewhere in the uh, Unreal. Um, engine content and then convert it to parameter which would be called base and then you can take a multiply node and a vector parameter for shadow color which I like having like a purpley color and you multiply these together and then you get a lerp node and you're gonna have to lerp between these two next get your collection parameter and choose the light vector and you're gonna have to mask this so that it's only using the first three RGB. And you're gonna do a dot product with your vertex normal. And then you can plug this into your dither temporal AA node and clamp it. And then when you plug it into the emissive, you should get 
the beginning of one. Yeah, that's a little bit more noticeable. So, right, so now you have your basic diffuse part. Um, so now we can make the specular. For the specular, you, you, it's this again, and do a dot product with a reflection vector. Which you can then go to the, use a power to change how powerful it is with a scalar parameter that we can call something like spec. I think I used seven on my other one. So I just use that there and you can mess with it. Okay, after you get your power, you um, lerp between. Um, using this as the alpha, you lerp between negative one and one, and then you dither it and clamp. All right. Next, you want to create a vector for highlight color which you could either use straight or you can multiply together with your base and then you lerp again with this as the alpha and these as A and B And then you got your highlight. Next thing you can do is if you want to have a normal map, just plug your normal mapping, uh, convert to a parameter and call it norm. And then all you have to do is throw another dot product in here for the shadows and one here for the highlights and you have a normal map working. One last thing to do is create a final lerp using a shade value that will uh, completely darken this when it's blocked from the sun. So plug the lerping as A or plug in your shadow color as B. Then when it it's not under shade for zero. It'll look normal. When it's in shade, it'll be completely dark. And I can just set this to one. So we can throw this onto these guys. And hopefully this will work. Or the four factor actually has to be from the uh, from the actor. Um, that was a mistake and it has to be multiplied, I believe by negative one. So yeah, now, now it appears to be working correctly. All right. The last thing we need to do is being able to have these objects being shaded. So to shade, we can use a blueprint function library. Um, uh, 
and then set shading. There, set shade. And we're gonna need a few inputs. We're gonna need a vector for for um, starting location and then a bunch of floats uh, first we're going to need length which will be the length of a ray cast which we can set to like 500 or a thousand for default um, the current shade which will be saved so that we can interpolate and this is going to need to be passed by reference delta time and interp speed which we can set to default of one and um, this doesn't need to be passed by reference. And last, we need the mesh component. Okay, so first we go and uh, get vector parameter. And we um two vector from your air color, and then we go into line trace for uh, line trace for objects, which we will use the starting location for start, and then we multiply. Vector times float. Multiply this by length. And then add that to your starting location to create your end location. And we can go into object types and create an array which will have world static. Uh, dynamic and pawn you can put whatever you need and then we f interp to to get a nice uh, smoothing effect when it changes shade all right so we, we get current shade and set float uh, set by ref set that by its reference and use this as the current in this is whether true or false true or false casted as your target which will give you a zero or one um, Delta, get your delta time variable and your interp speed variable and then last we get our mesh component and set scalar parameter value on materials which does it for every material on there in case you have multiple and put in shade and use this as your parameter value for both that and this and i think we should be good here so now we can um, 
go and convert this to a blueprint. Um, and if we go into the event graph under tick, we can go um, here and set our shade. We can use our mesh comp the stack mesh for the mesh component. Um, dot the time, of course. Um, this needs to be promoted to a variable. Length can be kept, and then we just need to get actor location for that. Then should be good. Um, we can go and set the debug type to one frame for your line trace to make it nice and easy. So now it should have a line trace going the direction of the sun. And when it's blocked by something, it'll get darker. And of course, you can change the interp speed to maybe like 1.5 or something. Or whatever you need to get it to feel right. And it might be a good idea to go and um, go to your class defaults and set the interval to like 0 0.05 or something. So it's only going like 20 times a second instead of 60, hopefully, which I feel is about as low as you can go and still have the interp look really nice and smooth. That was Mr. Tripi, and thanks for watching. If you want to help my channel grow, please consider liking and subscribing. Thank you.